So this is going to be one of the easiest reviews ever, as it's not worth anyone's time. And we would not even be here wasting everyone's time if it was not for the fact that I was given a code. You know, I, I, I will say, of course, I am not going to uh, be a insincere fuck. So thank you very much, blame others, for said code. I do feel like you wasted it on me, considering, like, you knew I was only ever going to play it once and never touch that horrible piece of shit again. Oops, I guess that spoiled the review, didn't it? But, you know, nevertheless... Thank you very much, I do appreciate it. Even if it, even if I personally feel like it was wasted on me. But, whatever, this is Valorant. I mean CSGO, I mean Trend Chaser, I mean Rogue Company. Now I know what you might be thinking. <laughs> this seems kind of harsh to immediately discredit the game within the very first opening sentence. Like, you know, last time with uh, Ninjala, once you got to the microtransactions, you ripped that shit apart. You were just like, fuck you. But before that, you did say like, oh, you know, it looks fairly nice, it plays fairly nice, I mean, you know, they did the whole loot box skin degradation thing, and that that's where you went mad, but, you know, the, the first part was fine. Well, yes, but that's, uh, that's because I don't really know gung-ho. This, the, the, this fact that it's just instantly bad, and that's not a bias, we'll get into extra reasons in a moment, but the fact why it's instantly bad, simply, the publisher. Two things, so, for anybody that is new to these reviews, two things. One, the company behind this game, hi -res, is not to be trusted. And two, I will be comparing this game to two other games which hi -res has made. While totally different genres, it will make sense in the ending section. Ever played CSGO? Ever played Call of Duty? Played any military shooter ever? Yeah, that's the graphics you're getting. Everything is as dull and basic as you can get. The environments are standard Unity Asset Store buildings and boxes. All standard dull colours with standard dull tables and chairs. And It has nothing in its visual department that makes it stand out from any other shooter ever. This does not look any different from this which does not look any different from this, which does not look any different from this. It is the most standard, cheapest graphical style you could go with, which is not even including the menus. I'll go more in detail in the gameplay, but at the start of each round, you need to buy like weapon upgrades and stuff, and we get this bog standard, once again, Unity Asset Store, Weapon purchase screen, no flair, no personality, just boilerplate green shite. Compare this, now, to both Paladins and Realm Royale. The upgrade screen of Paladins, bright and colourful, all the things to buy, colour coded, looks more fucking appealing compared to Call of Duty here. To Paladins again, we are uh, an even realm. We are immediately immersed in a more colourful backdrop. We can just look as we're diving down on this world and we can see a bright colour diversity. Lush greens over in the fields, purples and blues in the mushroom jungle. We can see a nice colour diversity, colourful castles, so on. Every hero in both either are something unique like a fucking dragon or, in Realm's case, you can dress them up in purple spandex 
adorned with golden armor and have a big afro because it wants to have fun compared to standard man, standard man, standard man, standard woman. Oh, but yeah, you can get the pay to win watchdogs man here, so I guess it's all alright. So visually, it has nothing to offer that high res's other games don't already offer and feels like another military shooter for the pile with no care put into any of the graphical elements. You get one or two generic tracks for the menu. Now, I do get games like this are not exactly known for their musical prowess. In any kind of shooter, you need to hear where the gunfire is coming from, so there is not too much to, to like play music, nowhere to really play them, but at the very least, you know, Paladins tried, you know, climbing the, the Tower of the Demons in the Rise of Furia event, Oh, here's some Doom Slayer, Demon Slaying Metal music. This Darkness and Dragons event, though, you know, high res once again being stupid, it's called Darkness and Dragons, though the dragon did not get a dragon skin in the Dragon Battle Pass. Logic. Still, it has some music that tries to invoke the idea of a big war between the darkness and the dragons. I'm not asking for the full Philharmonic Orchestra to come in and do Mario Galaxy levels of soundtrack, but a little effort would be nice. But again, I know why, you know why, I mean if you're a first timer to high res you don't, but if you're a regular, if you're regular at the high res tavern, I know why, you know why. Because the bartender's drunk, we'll get to the bartender. <sighs> but that's not the only thing wrong though. Because again, a, a little bit of music or whatever. But the one thing you need to be able to do in a shooter is have clear audio. The most pinpoint accurate audio of where someone is. Here, there is none of that half the time. I was spinning around like an idiot, shooting uh, just in random directions and constantly shouting WHERE roll footage. Whoa. Fuck you. I swear one of them is behind us. SHOOT HIM! That bomb is gonna go off. We're gonna die. What is this shit? Oh yeah, that was good. That was real good, that was. That was real fucking good, that was. God, the sound on this is fucking shit as well. Are you fucking for real? There you go. No, we lose. That's enough. We we misery over. Oh, look at look at that. Look at that. Look at that lovely fucking child teabagging. You see in shooters there is 3D audio. Let me draw you a box here on paint. Box drawn. There is 3D audio. This is where the game will make noises in an exact 3D space to let you know exactly where the enemy is in the area. In both high res's games, they do this better. In both Realm and Paladins. Let's use Realm though, because that is a um, more open map. So, in Realm, and Fortnite, because because they're the same genre. Say you're in a house and you're on the ground floor. Someone else is in this house with you. From this 3D audio, we can tell exactly where they are. Whether front door, back door, left window, right window, 
bedroom or basement. And the same for them. They know exactly where I am. This allows both players to know where each other is in this house so that they can engage in a fight, preferably on their terms. Here, you have none of that. Even with a headset, you know, the thing that is supposed to make 3D audio even better and more pinpoint. You don't get that. You get two noises. Big noise in your left ear, big noise in your right ear. On, you know, the thing that is supposed to make the 3D audio better, that's not good. That's not good. Let's make a drawing. Compare my two drawings here. So, we have first drawing with all these arrows. We can detect exactly where this person is. And then we have this drawing. Big blob on the left, big blob on the right. That's if you're lucky. So when I'm going... What is this shit? Oh yeah, that was good. That was real good, that was. That was real fucking good, that was. It's because the, 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 the audio is shit. There is no audio. It's like, okay, there is a noise to the right of me. I at least know there is someone on the right. So there's somebody over here somewhere. But where is, is a total guess. So you just have to hope that you see them before they see you. So it doesn't make fights actually like engaging. It just more makes it a look based shooter of whoever sees the other one first wins. Because like with the uh, other games, even if they see you first, you have um, abilities to get out of the way. You have a method of healing. You can, you can like reposition if need be. Now obviously they would be chasing you but you could reposition to an area of your advantage. Here, if somebody sees you before you see them, you're dead. You don't have time to reposition. You don't have time to recover. It is, it, they have upped the damage on the guns so that the game, or at least each round of the game, is going to be quite fast paced, which is fine. A fast paced game's fine. If you don't want people to heal, that's okay. But if you're not gonna let people heal, if you're gonna make every bullet do pretty much half your HP, you need clear audio distinctions of where each person is in this building. Not just big blob on the left or big blob on the right. Because whoever sees whoever first is the one that's going to win 90% of the time. Because the audio is shit. Which means if you have played Valorant, the game that this is trying to trend chase, come back to that in a minute if you have played Valorant or Call of Duty or any other military shooter or hell even Battle Royale like Fortnite with clear 3D audio this game is going to get you very annoyed very fast there is supposed to be a story mode I think think but it doesn't seem like it's out yet although given high res this track record it will more than likely never come out so can't say on the story but more on why it'll probably never come out after this last section hey kids you like CSGO you like Valorant you like the bombies at A? That mode that is even in Fortnite now? Well, here's another shameless, soulless CSGO clone for you. So yeah, the main gimmick of this game is CSGO. It's Valorant. It's that one mode in Fortnite. I.E. High res not having a single original thought in their head and trend chasing as they always do. So this time they wanted to trend chase Valorant with the whole bomb defusal thing. You know, plant the bomb at A or B, terrorists must plant the bomb and protect the bomb, allies must kill all the terrorists and if the bomb has been planted, defuse it in time. First team to seven points wins. That is way too fucking many. 
the first to five would have sufficed, and we have powers like Valorant, and that's it. It's boot like Valorant. You pick a hero, there's your heroes, with different powers, and y you go shoot. For kills and round wins, you get cash at the start of every round, and you can spend your cash in the basic bitch unity asset store to upgrade your gun and get extra things like extra armor or quicker revival times, and that is your lot. It is as basic as you can really get compared to one of their bigger games like Paladins, where you pick your hero, then you have to pick five cards out of a set of 20. What level do you want each of these five cards? This will drastically alter your stats. Then once the battle begins, what items are you going to buy? Which again, combined with the cards that you picked and the levels you picked for them cards, is also going to alter your stats. It offers more engaging gameplay opposed to this. But now we get to the juicy part, the part that makes it truly, and I mean truly, worthless. Except that there's just a chance you might detect their attitude. It's nothing underhanded, why it's simple and it cares. Someone's gotta lose or else the price is not competitive. So first off, this game is three months late. More on that in the last section, but for now, all you need to know is this game is three months late and during its three months of delays, everyone was talking about things, you know, about Valorant, you know, Valorant is dying, we've already got videos, where did the Valorant hype go? ...to today. The game has launched and has more or less quietly settled down. While it isn't reasonable to expect interest to remain at the same level from announcement to release, with the level of insurmountable expectations that the game had, it's hard not to feel a little disappointed by the position the game holds today. Is this just another step in the hype cycle? So, if Valorant, the game that you're trying to trend chase, is already dying, how do you hope to stand a chance? Hmm, so all the talks were happening, but it came out. Better late than never, I suppose. Although, you know, never would have been more sufficient and you could have actually, like, not fired a million people. Shh! Get to that at the end. That's the final section. But, you know, better late than never, I suppose. And everyone wanted to at least look at the store page. Not so much buy it, but at least look first and foremost. On the console side, there is no issue, of course. You got it on PSN or your Switch store or wherever you're going. You press the download button and there you go. Go to PC, on the other hand, then you got the unfortunate shock. It's an Epic Store exclusive. Now, as a reviewer, I personally am not against using Epic or even buying anything off the Epic Store, like the Outer Worlds, which was an Epic Store exclusive. If they can be a competitor to Steam, that is fine. However, Epic likes to engage in underhanded practices, like in certain countries where it operates, the launcher and some of the games born, bought via that launcher contain spyware. An allegation that was at one point proven true. So most casual players that are not reviewers or even some big YouTubers pretty much stay away from Epic. Like Fiora. I won't go near this thing. Let me just give you a little, a little history on Little Explosion Horse here. Just to kind of give you the gravity of the Epic Store. Little Explosion Horse here is one of the biggest Fallout fans in the world, and they are very successful with that franchise, making two, not just one, two officially published Fallout Equestria books. They got the go-ahead, they got the green light from both Todd Howard and Hasbro, I think Stephen Davis is the CEO. She got the go-ahead from the, from the two boys at the top to officially publish Fallout Pony books. That's great, fantastic, good work, you, you made it. So, they are heavily, heavily invested in the Fallout universe, and they are a Fallout fan. 
and when Fallout 76 was not up to standard, that was a really huge fucking disappointment to them. It was a huge disappointment to us all. I myself am like Fiora. I myself am a Fallout fan. I myself hate the fact that Pete Hines is a lying little jackal that won't take any accountability, saying they'll never be paid to win items in the store when there clearly is, but then he wiggles his way out of it because you're a liar, Pete Hines. That's another story for another day. So we were devastated at Fallout 76 being total shit. But then, after it was total shit, here's the Xbox conference. Obsidian, the creators of Fallout New Vegas, the best one in many people's eyes. They come up to you and say, hey, we know Fallout 76 was shit. You know Bethesda's being shit with the creation engine. We are making the Outer Worlds. All the RPG stuff from New Vegas, but better. Because we get to use the Unreal Engine. We get to use all the fancy toys that Xbox has to offer. Naturally, the, the, the finger was on the hype button. It was announced. Everybody was hyped. I was enjoying it. Fiora was enjoying it. Then... They announced it was an Epic Store exclusive. Despite being an Obsidian fangirl, despite being one of the biggest Fallout fans and making two pony Fallout books, despite really wanting it, no. That was it. You, The second it got announced as an Epic Store exclusive, Little Explosion Horse, gone. Hype, dead. And they were happy to miss out on the Outer Worlds for a whole year as they want nothing to do with Epic. They won't dare even install that. Do you see the problem? Anyway, I myself, I'm not as harsh. I know what I'm going into. I I'm going in with all the virus protection on high every time I have to deal with Epic. And while it might not be needed, if you're gonna dance with the devil, you gotta play by the devil's rules. You know, like, Hi, I'm the Epic Store. I'm the devil, and I'm gonna try and fuck you with spyware. Hi, I'm Spyro Devil Witch Bling Bling, and I too am a devil that is going to try and fuck you if you try and fuck me. You have to play by the devil's rules. You have to be a devil yourself, so I'm not adverse to it. But most people are. So at least on PC, we're not off to a great start. Not at the time. Not not with Epic. But let's uh, let's continue down the rabbit hole. So we're not off to a great start with it being Epic Store exclusive. Now at the time, I was on Animal Crossing with Princess Amanetta. Red was on my island, and being how rare he he is, I was like, hey Princess, he's here. He's got a second genuine piece of art. Do you want to get it? Yes, and so I'm letting Amanetta come over, she's coming over to my island, she's gonna grab the art. At that moment, it went up on Epic, and Blame was in the call. The first thing he says to me is it's up, and I'm like, oh it's up, well, you know, good for it, I don't care. Then, these words and this conversation happened, and my heart sank. Mr. Sporo, what version of the game do you want? What? It's it's not free. It's, sorry, it's not free to play like the other games. It's paid for, and there are different versions. <laughs> At that point, I posted my favourite new emo in our Discord of Grogar Depression. This is it on screen. You see this? I'm a sad goat boy. Look at that face. That's the face of a man that just wants to end it all. Do you find yourself wondering how you could end it all? Oh. Hi, Billy Mays here from Suicide Buddy. The easy way to fill yourself simply need to activate, apply, and buy. So Blame said it was a paid-for game, and it offers three versions. A $15 version, a $30 version, and the full triple. $60 version. Mmm! Great! Great! 
I love it. Following the Ubisoft school of gaming with Assassin's Greed, with the standard version, the deluxe version, the ultimate version, the Brotherhood version, and the Mega Super Mega Collector's Edition. Which, uh, hey, hi Res, word of warning, but you know, right? Y you know, like, right now, now is not the best idea to take business practices from the rape company. You know, the company that protected rapists and abusers like Vice C CEO Sergei Haskue, who physically strangled a woman. It's not a good look, hi res. And if you say, oh no no, we're more thinking of something like NBA 2K with its bronze, silver and gold editions, again, that's not a good look considering CEO of Take-Two, Strauss Zelnick, does not see people as people, but and in his own words, would to chop. Yeah, kick. The rage is building, can you feel it? Can you feel it? I, I need to, this, this form here, this purple, I need to get somebody, I need to get the, the person that did all these amazing uh, fourth wall breaks, sorry to break the fourth wall, but I need to get the person that did all these amazing like little, little things to do a dark version of this where my scales are just all black and my belly's silver and I've just got the, you know, this version, because I'm getting mad again, because you know what's coming, it's the, oh, it's the Ninjala, <laughs> it's the Ninjala. So, first of all, on the, uh, the additions, why could you not just make a game and sell a game? Why, why couldn't you do that, hi res? Here is Paper Mario that we were playing on stream. You know, a game. You know how many versions of Paper Mario there is? One. Just one. One single $60 version. Why couldn't you do that, hi res? Why could you not just make one single $60 version and sell one single $60 version? Why, could, why couldn't you just do that, hi res? Oh. I know why! I know why! Because this is Ninjala. This is the Ninjala problem. As if it was just, oh, what version do you want? It would be stupid, but whatever. I would not be making such a big deal. But it's not just the $60, $15, $30 like Ninjala. It is a stacking problem. It stacks. It goes do 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 stairway to heaven, stack it to the fucking sky. <sighs> because it is a sixty dollar game. Yes, I am going to use the highest version of your game, high res. Because if you want to charge sixty for a paid game, then you shall be treated as a sixty dollar game. And even if. Even if, let's let's play a little bit of devil's advocate. Even if we were taking the lowest price, the $15 version, regardless of version, even the 15 one, regardless of version, you are a paid for game with microtransactions. Sorry, did I say microtransactions? No, that would imply that anyone of you at high res gives a fuck and had some kind of fucking morality and care for the well-being of others. No, it doesn't have microtransactions like every other snivelling AAA company. It has mega transactions. You have the normal $10 pack. Ooh, isn't that nice? All the way up to your 80 English pounds, 100 US dollars whale pack. You know, 
the one that no teenager or anyone in their right fucking mind should buy, but you're hoping and praying to manipulate people once again, getting them into crippling debt from your hundred dollar whale packs and have major depression and might jump because there's no way to get out of the debt once you're in it. And you were the ones that put them there. And when they do do that, will you take the blame? Will you fucking have some accountability, hi res? No, you will just go on the hunt for another whale, another nice big whale to nibble on your whale pack. Am I right, Turolf Jernström? Retention and your monetization is to make sure you have enough of an in-game economy in there. Uh, the thousand up there is actually clearly lowballing it. Top grossing games have in-game economies worth tens of thousands. That's how you can uh, keep people in there. They have lots of things to do, to, to stuff to upgrade, to progress along, and that's how you can, can make them, them spend a lot as well. Since mm, nice. But please, hi res before we go any deeper on that, before we go any deeper on your little fucking practices, why are there even microtransactions? You want to have a $60 game, you want to have a paid for game, so why do you need them? To keep the servers running? That's the typical AAA excuse! Well alright then, let's play that fucking AAA devil devil's advocate. You want the microtransactions to keep the servers running? What's the $60 for then? Hi Res. What's that money for? Nothing? Okay then. Okay then. But then, but then we go even deeper, even deeper down the fucking rabbit hole. Not only is there a $100 mega transaction whale pack, but like all the other AAA games, hi res, like all the other fucking AAA games, you had to be a pathetic little coward, hiding behind your magic monopoly money. Again, we know why, we've seen Turolf Jernstrom's fucking presentation, we know why, because like the cowards working on Fortnite, like that coward Todd Howard working on 76, and like that fucking coward, Strauss Zelnick, like all the little cowards at Gung Ho, they know if they dared put the actual prices, you know, if they dared actually be a big fucking man, actually be a man about it, and put the real prices on their items, then people would say, people would see them, I should say, before what they would say. But people would see them for what they really are. A waste of money. They would see your legendary skin for $20 and be like, hmm, well, that's $20. Because if they see some, they could be like, ooh, that's $20. That's a lot. I could actually get a fucking good indie game or even two. For that, so you, what you do is you do what every other AAA company does. You're a little fucking coward and you make your magic monopoly money so that people don't feel as guilty. So that they remove that bias, that buyer's remorse. So that they can justify it in their own head. Because this is what fucking Turolf Jernström has taught you. Because again, if someone sees $20, if someone saw the real price, they'd be like, oh, I could get an indie game or two for that. But, if it's 2,000 crowns, or crystals, or V-Bucks, or whatever you want to charge, well, it's just crystals. It's not real. It's magic monopoly money. And it's a psychological way to manipulate people into feeling more justified in spending $20. You still spent the $20, that $20 is still gone, but because you got crystals, then it's okay, because you might have a few left over. It's a deal, right? Like, 
You got an extra hundred crystals. You got a hundred left over. You know, that thing that has no real value. It has no real world value and can be sent in the millions because it has no actual value. It's just a couple of ones and zeros. There's no fucking value in them. But because you got a hundred extra, you can rationalize it. You can self-justify it more. You can talk yourself out of feeling bad. It's a nasty little way to remove that buyer's remorse. I got to talk about the game's monetization approach. Paladin seems intent on following the Warframe mentality by monetizing their games in two very distinct ways. Firstly, players can buy a very expensive annual season passes priced at $29.99 USD to gain access to the paid in-game battle pass system. And secondly, players can buy a variety of cosmetic items by spending diamonds of premium in-game currency. I'm rather divided on this approach because on one hand I think $29.99 is far too much to spend on any battle pass, but at the same time at least it's a pretty transparent means of monetizing your game. Not much trickery behind that. However, the same cannot be said about the in-game diamonds. I don't like the concept of spending money to acquire in-game premium currency that you then spend on premium items. It's a means of psychologically controlling players. It's behavior modification, basically. Studies have confirmed that people are more likely to spend money on in-game microtransactions if they are not using cash or otherwise face the direct cost of their transaction. This is a tactic that the mobile industry has exploited for years now. Diamonds, aside from gold, is one of the most common types of premium currency universally recognized in mobile games. And I'm not overly fond of any AAA game, even a free-to-play game, taking its cues from the mobile game industry in terms of how best to monetize their in-game system. Am I right, Turolf Jernström? Now, if we look at this from a monetization perspective, the hook is where you put up an icebreaker. You want to give a really, really good deal, something that's a, a no-brainer. You would be crazy to turn it down as a player. The reason to give a really good deal up front is by making people spend up front, they are also emotionally committing to your game, their retention will go up. And the first spend is, uh, it breaks the ice, then they think of themselves as spenders in the game. It's okay for me to spend in the game. Uh, lots of people are otherwise have this wall up, I will never pay for a mobile game. So you need to break the, the wall first. The habit is like the main meat of the game. This is where you sell the faster progress, as we just discussed. And the hobby is for the guys who have already maxed out. They're the guys who have uh, all of their Clash of Clans building at the max level. They, they are already there. So you can no longer sell progress to them, you have to sell consumables. This is where you, you're selling uh, the faster healing times or, or faster build times of armies. Uh, this is also where you get ba basically unlimited upper spend. There's no limit to how much you can spend in, for instance, Clash of Clans. You fucking cowards, hi res. You fucking cowards. Why don't you just put the real prices on? Why are you hiding behind your magic monopoly money? I would say, I, I mean, I would say, I know why, because like everyone else, you're a coward, which you are, but no, 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 we know the real fucking reason, the reason it always has been, the reason it always ever will be, the reason for this whole fucking mess with the developers getting fired. Yes, we will get to that in a moment when I finish this sentence, but we know the reason why you're doing this. The reason it always has been, the reason it always re will be, the reason for this whole fucking mess. Because you're a child wanting to play pretend in your little fantasy game, and you don't care how many people you hurt how many people have to suffer because you just want to play pretend and here it will be no different. FINAL SECTION! So, for anyone new to this, if you're here wondering why why Dragon gets so mad, 
for anybody new to high res you know anybody anybody that's just happened to come along the road and stumble into this bar you're in for a fucking treat so if you're new to high res if this is your first high res game put it down right now if you just randomly come along the road and seen this bar walk away from it do not come into this bar do not enter do not go do not pass go walk away as whatever plans and dreams and ideas you personally have for this game they're not gonna happen they're never going to happen they never will as history lesson here's your history lesson all you newcomers I will now calm down slightly but here's your history lesson for anybody that's new to high res high res are nothing more than a child playing pretend to the big brother and do nothing but trend chase and even when they are given the keys to the kingdom when they are handed the goose that lays the golden egg twice not once twice they throw it away they throw it away into the trash because little Timmy wants to play pretend and trend chase the next big thing. I've done three parts, by the way. These will be related. These I, I, I don't know if I put a card or, or a thing on the video, but you can watch all three parts. But I have done three parts, one for each of their games. And there is a fourth part coming with this now actually out. As I and several others, but will we'll stick with me for a minute, I have personally spoken to an ex-developer that worked there. Well, let's, let's get back to the trend chasing for a minute. Let's give you a little history lesson. So first of all, Halo was popular. Halo was one of the biggest games of its time when it released. And Hi-Rez, oh, well, they want to play pretend. Hi-Rez trend chase with global agenda and their bootleg master chief here. Look at him. There was going to be a global agenda too. But it was cancelled. As space marines, they were not popular anymore. So it was thrown out the window. It was dropped. Gone. To trend chase MOBAs. League of Legends and Dota 2 were popular. And high res trend chase with smite. It was okay. They got a few big YouTubers involved, like John Tron. Do you remember this? So, you want to be a professional smite player? I hear you. I heard you. You got to need a few things. One, a headphones. Two, a keyboard and mouse. Three, computer. But most important of all, you're going to need me to show you the way. Oh, and I can't forget. How about a cold brew? Top it off. the clown ah well you don't know how big of a clown you were if you saw them today John Trump and while it's still doing okay it's not as good as it could be because MOBAs are old news and we need a new trend to chase and this new card genre looks right up my alley Hearthstone launched to major waves everybody loved Hearthstone in its ultimate first release and hi res trend chased hi it's me i'm doing some post editing this is fucking stupid this is this really puts it into perspective like it you've seen the um you've seen the logos as they've been popping up you know you saw the hand of the gods one you saw the strike one but it's like i i was getting these logos on fucking google and it's so fucking sad like you know oh, paladin strike logo Literally, the only PNG is the one of it in fucking Alpha because they never updated the logo because it died in Alpha. It fucking died in Alpha. And I'll put the little bit on the side where it's dead and everybody's like, hey, where is it? It's fucking dead. I, I go back to the, the fucking... Just back up a minute. Realm Royale logo. Look at them all. Alpha. Beta. Alpha, Beta, Alpha, they never updated the logo. It's dead, it died in Beta because they've gone to fucking Trend Chase Valorant. So it's like, Jesus fucking Christ. And then the Hand of the Gods one, the first one that you saw, let me just fucking go back. 
this is the only PNG that exists with the fucking beta on. Because as you can see by the tweet, it fucking died in beta. All their games never, ever make it out of beta. Never. They all fucking die in beta. The only one that's managed to do it is Paladins, and you know, we'll discuss that. And fucking Smite, and again, that's fucking debatable. But fucking hell, man. And also, do you like fucking Hearthstone cards? With Hand of the Gods, their biggest and most blatant trend chase yet. It was literally just a bootleg Hearthstone. It died and was terminated. Servers gone, accounts gone, the evidence gone within the space of two years. Which, by the way, Hand of the Gods never made it out of beta. It just died in beta. Something to keep in mind going forward in this history lesson. But it's okay if it died in beta. It was just a bootleg Hearthstone. It was just cards. And you know, cards are out. Cards are old news. And heroes are in. And that other thing Blizzard's working on. Oh, that looks like it's going to be the next big, big thing. I think we'll just uh, sneak into fucking Blizzard's office and we'll just grab a slice of that pie. So then Overwatch was released. And it got popular. It went through the roof. And hi res. Trend chased. With paladins. However. This one. Was actually good. It took four games. Worth of trend chasing. Worth of four games of shitty little bootlegs. But. They made something. That could be considered. Better than the original, better than Overwatch. It had a better world than Overwatch, better lore than Overwatch, better characters than Overwatch, and better gameplay than Overwatch. I've got a video that goes more into detail on that. This is a review, I won't bog you down with the details, they're in another video, but it was better than Overwatch. But this was Willy Wonka's golden ticket. This is the thing that really gets everybody's blood boiling because this was Willy Wonka's golden ticket and they got it it kicked the shit out of Battleborn you don't remember Battleborn you remember Paladins more than Battleborn what does everybody say Paladins it's the free overwatch what's what do people say about Battleborn Randy Pitchford worked on it and it was shit and he died and there you go it's gone so it's like they did it they kicked the shit out of Battleborn and it was well on its way to rising to the challenge of rivaling Overwatch. It was all going good. But uh oh, what's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? Well, kind of. It's Fortnite taking the world by storm. People were quick to be at high res's throats saying no. Do not follow trends. Do not do it. This is the winner. You have the winner. You've done it. Don't don't look at Fortnite. You've done it. It's already too late. By the time people were saying don't do it, it's already too late. Introducing Open Beta 64, known as OB64, that not only added a pay to win system, but a battle royale mode as well, in the form of Paladin's Battleground. Uh -huh. A patch so bad that it nearly killed the game in a single day, with tens of thousands leaving and never coming back. They only stopped the bleeding three days later with a tweet that said they were going to be ripping all that shit out in the very next week in OB65, which they did. But by that point, the damage was already done. And just because they, you know, they reverted it, just because they ripped it out, doesn't change what they did, nor was it going to change what they were going to do. Because of course, they were going to trend chase. 
Of course, they'd seen how much money Fortnite was making. And despite having a good game, they were going to throw it all away and try and chase Fortnite. With Open Beta 70, only five patches later, Open Beta 70 being quickly changed to Official 1.0. Paladins is still, to this day, Riddled with more bugs and issues than any one man can list. There was no way in hell this game was ready to go out the door. None. But out the door you go. Out the door you go. Into the buggy, sometimes downright fucking broken state that you are. Because we've got a trend chase. See, by the way, out the door in the buggy, sometimes broken state you are, see Sands of Myth update, where textures were missing, entire character models were missing, rooms did not load right, all the stats were the same, the battle pass, for some, got to level 99+, plus, and people finished it within moments of logging on to the game. And play of the game? More like, nope. They removed that, they removed that to allegedly fix bugs, and it caused more bugs than you can fucking imagine. This is only the tip of the iceberg for Sands of Myth. All this, by the way, all this shit is in the official quote-unquote stable version. This shit, all this Sands of Myth shit, was the official stable version, not the PTS. You know what the PTS stands for? Public Test Server. So the public can see what's broken, tell you what's broken, and you can fix that shit before all this broken shit comes into the official game. They don't fucking care anymore. They don't. They were just like, oh, well, everybody reported all this broken shit. Out the door you go. Bye bye. Bye bye. We got Fortnite to deal with. Goodbye. There you go, Sansa Myth. Dude, this is a stable version, and it released like this. Yeah, but fuck that, because Fortnite is popular. <sighs> Fortnite was popular, and Hi-Rez, as, as you can fucking tell, trend chased with Realm Royale. A shameless, like really fucking shameless cash grab at Fortnite. It was in OB64, everyone knew what it was, and everybody knew what game Hi-Rez was playing, and everybody had clocked onto their pattern. Do you see their pattern, first time viewer? Do you see their pattern, first time entry to the Hi-Rez bar? This is why you should walk away, but let's keep going. So everybody had clocked onto their game, however, however, by, by the gods, and demons of this world. This proves there is a god. This proves there is a greater fucking force in the universe. By the gods and demons of this world, the stars aligned, the planets aligned, the fucking galaxies aligned on a blue moon on Friday the 13th. And once again, by some fucking miracle, it was better than the original. Somehow. Somehow. It, oh, it surpassed the thing it sought to copy. No build fagging. Everyone liked that. Forced engagement rather than just sitting in a box for two hours. Everybody liked that. Healing and shielding while moving. It was all great. Again, full video on that elsewhere. But it was all great. It was all going well. Everybody was liking it. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? Here comes Valorant. Here comes Valorant. Now, originally, everyone was fucking steaming. Everyone was fucking steaming. Because they knew. They knew. This time we were prepared. This time we were ahead of the curve. The second Riot announced Valorant, everybody was like... Type on the keyboard. This time, everybody knew. And this time, this wasn't begging. This wasn't asking nicely. We were done playing nice. This was not begging. This was a threat. Do not. Do not trend chase. Paladins is wonky. 
but it's good. It can be fixed. This realm is a bit wonky, but it's good. It can be fixed. Here you are, the winning tickets, dipped in gold and laced with diamond. These are the two you will focus on. These are the two you will put money into making them better. You have the gift of the fucking gods. They can make money. They can be good. You do not need Valorant. Don't you dare go copy that Valorant shite. They dared. They dared. And so, Realm died. That's it. End story. It dead. It gone forever. As did their spin-off game, which it's a spin-off, so you know it's kinda over here, it's not in the main timeline. But so did Paladin Strike. They they saw, you know, MOBAs were good on phone. So they brought Paladin Strike out. Oh look at that! 2018! That was when their last tweet was. Look at all the comments. Where's uh, where's the update? Are they not updating this game anymore? Everybody asking, where's the update, hi res? They're never going to make an update. Because they don't care anymore. That's not the shiniest new toy. That's not the hottest trend. Even though it's unfinished. Even though it's in beta. It's not going to get an update. It never will. If you are playing Paladin Strike, give up. There's no one working on it. Go home. There's only one guy running the fucking servers. So, that's dead, as is Realm. But we're, we're, we're still on Realm. So that's just a mobile spin-off. But just know, they also killed their mobile spin-off because it's not the shiniest new toy. Back over here. Back over here. So hi res put a lot and I mean a lot of money into Rogue Company even if it doesn't look like it considering the generic assets we're talking more money when it comes to advertisers paying youtubers and streamers to cover the alpha paying big advertisers like Nintendo to host an ad in one of its direct the money sunk into this was big which implies, you know, ooh, well, if so much money has been put into it, the resources that are also going to go into it are going to be big. June 2019, when it was announced at E3, production, updates, news, everything on Realm Royale, started to slow down. Keep in mind, remember, everyone loved this game. Everybody was still playing this game. Everybody was hyped. But production updates, news, battle passes, all slowed to a crawl across the course of June and July. And by the end of July, nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And this is how it was for five Count them, five months. Five months of silence. No tweets, no videos, nothing. Five months of nothing. Not even somebody saying, yeah, we're still here. Most thinking it's dead. Uh, that's it, GG. They threw Realm in the bin for, for, for their next big trend. Finally, January 2020 at the High res Expo, we got some news that content would be coming in February. We had the hopefuls. We had the hopefuls of the community saying, well, you know, Rogue Company should be releasing in March, which was its original release date. Okay, so, you know, let, let's, let's join those hopefuls. Okay, so staff might have been pulled from Realm to work on Rogue Company, but now that we know Rogue Company is out, now that we have got a clear release date, even though it's a little bit late, even though we've got a clear release date, it is clear that production of Rogue Company is now mostly done. And now everyone will be going back to where they should be. We got one major update in February. Just the one, and that was it. There was nothing. That's it's done. 
there's been a few LT LTMs, limited time modes, there's been a few LTMs and a few reskins that are not even new. And after that, but after that big update, there was nothing. Again, people started digging. But wh wh why, where have they gone? Ro Rogue is finished. Rogue is ready. Where, where are the people? And what myself and other YouTubers have found is downright vile due to being strung along by high res. High res playing this little game. There will be a full video on that. There will be a full video on everything we found. But a quick summary for again all you first timers to the high res tavern here. This guy got an open interview. He could he can say that guy, he can say the dev's name. This guy got an open interview with a developer still working there. Question 20, please. Alrighty guys, so question number 20 here. The Realm Royale team seems to have made a hard pivot away from battle passes. Can you explain what prompted that change and why? So I know a ton of people with OB23 were super frustrated with the fact there was no battle pass. We had waited five, six months and we got no battle pass and then it got removed from the game so let's see what alex says alex says battle passes take a lot of time and artwork to properly release with each patch as the dev team downscaled we also decided to so this says a lot if you read between between the lines here battle passes take a lot of time okay and artwork so you have to remember that means devs or, de or artwork designers and then also your, on top of that, all the modelers and stuff like that. So it seems like that a lot of these skin artists have moved away from Realm. There's been rumor that a lot of them went over to Rogue Company. So it seems like because the team is so small, not confirmed, but team of three, that there's just no possibility that they could go ahead and do a battle pass with a bunch of world developers or QA guys. Like you only got three guys. Answer! There was a downsizing. There was no real number given, but there were whispers from what might have been inside sources saying there was now only three. Three people working on Realm. And I've got some info myself, which again, I'll go more in depth when we make fucking High Res Part 4. I'll go more in depth. All you need to know right now is this ex-developer that I have spoken to did indeed collaborate what the other developer has said. A. There was a downsizing. B. It was downsized to a team of, of three. And C. All the reskins and limited time modes were finished around August 2019 and are not new. They are just being spread out across the months for the illusion of content. That's that's what this devel ex developer confirmed. This is what we kind of already knew. This is just a confirmation. As for the new stuff that I found out talking to him, three more things. A. These devs were not moved to Rogue Company. When all that money was spent on advertisement and streamers and all this other shit, costs had to be cut somewhere, and Realm, being one of the less performing games, was the one that got the cost cuts. And the staff were not moved, but were outright fired. Since, since I said X developer. They were one of the ones that were fired in that downsizing. They still keep in contact with the staff working on Realm. And I can tell you right now, one more has also left. They were not fired. They quit of their own volition. Why did they quit of their own volition? Quite simple. They said to, to our ex-developer, they see no future at high res they see no future at the company especially because they are on the realm team and realm is dead 
and they feel like all that hard work that they put into the game has gone to waste. All that hard work, because remember, pretty much no one has the assets. All that hard work is about to go up in smoke when the servers terminate. All them assets, all them character skins, all, all those gunplay, everything is about to go. All that hard work that these people dedicated themselves to, gone. And now that high res doesn't care, and if high res doesn't care about that game, why should this other developer even say, hey, can I move to the Paladins team? Can I move to the Smite team? Why bother? Because we know the second that high res decides that they want a shiny new toy, that game's going to be out the window. Then that game's going to be out the window. So they saw no future at high res, so they quit of their own volition, feeling that all their work was wasted. B. Being there is only three, now only two, people working there. Aside from server maintenance and maybe, maybe, if you are lucky, a new gun. There is no way in hell they can make new content. Once all the LTMs and skins that the team made in August 2019 are gone, that's it. Realm will never, and they made it very clear, it will never change. It will never receive an update. Ever. You, you may, if again, if you are extremely lucky, if the stars align, you may get a new skin. Maybe. But it's just going to be a recolor. But aside from that, map changes, balance changes, battle passes, no. Forget it. It's never coming out. Stop dreaming. The game is finished. It's done. My frustration is shared with this person. My frustration is shared from the person I don't know that apparently quit. C! Which is clear right now. And this is the bit that annoys me the most. They are only keeping Realm Royale running to try and wring out as much cash from it as possible. Once they are done with it, they will shut it down. And everyone, and I mean everyone, knows what they're doing. Everyone is saying to stop stringing people along. Let's read some comments together. Alright, so let's let's begin, shall we? Let's let's begin. So we're on the one where they released a reskin of the uh, Jaguar. Uh, this one was basically the last big one. There are a few others that we'll get to after this one. I just want to highlight some of this because this was the last big one where basically all of the hopefuls were having that last big push. Like there was people still asking. There was people still believing. This is the one where you had that final, you know, that final stand for for the hopeful. So you you still had people being like. As you can see here from the Enforcer, please give us a new battle pass. We don't have anything to do or any reason to play. And I am, of course, responding with the information that we know. That there will never be, never, there will never be a new battle pass. There is no staff. There was only three. Confirm now that there is only two. So, that no, there is nothing. We, we have new mount, but no fixes. Because... It's, it's just a scheduled skin. This was made in August 2019. This is information that both me, me myself, and the other YouTuber that we just saw that had the interview with the developer, this is information that we know. And there is literally one or two guys, sometimes now due to Corona, only one guy sitting in the server room alone, and anytime the servers try and catch fire, he just sprays the fucking water bottle on. There's nothing. And this was my personal tweet saying, you know, another month, another reskin, it's dead. We have people here say, uh, saying, Rogue Company is the biggest reason why the community has to suffer. The lack of ambition makes me want to cry in despair. 
but they'll never give up on this beautiful game because again there is like with paladins which has gone to shit as well but like with paladins there is a community here there was a reason why at least back in the day when paladins first released alongside overwatch there was a reason why there are a lot of videos saying overwatch versus paladins there is a reason why even jeff kaplan himself made a comment about paladins and has played paladins and has admitted that he's played paladins and stepped forth in the whole debacle that happened there was a big enough community and a big enough happy community that you were starting to push to the top of that mountain which has since been abandoned the community is still there but high res doesn't care that community has been abandoned same with this guy here he will never give up on this beautiful game because again there is enough good ideas in here to beat fortnite there is enough good ideas that there is a happy community here a community that if you kept nurturing it could have started climbing that mountain but as this man says the community is suffering it is suffering because high res in the trash away it goes throw it in the fucking bin we don't care if we build up a fan base we don't care if we build up a community throw it in the bin imagine nintendo for example building up this mario community and then the, and then you know this year they they just come out and say okay guys i know we've literally had mario for like 60 years and uh like we've got this mario community but we're never going to make another mario game ever again can you imagine how many people would be very disappointed and very angry that there would never ever be a mario game ever ever again it pissed people off that's the kind of situation you're dealing with you got people here ben stewart also being the being another one that knows the information give us a battle pass stop begging it is not coming it never will um how how you're gonna let the game completely die but still post about skins and he's saying i'm pretty sure they're just using a bot people are making change.org positions to uh you know make realm force the developers or at least force high res to see that there is uh, potential here and they want people to uh, work on the game again of course we all know change.org does nothing change.org doesn't work but there's people still uh, still going how long till full release you know when's it coming out of beta probably never sadly which as we have discussed and as we have seen from the other games hand of the gods the only um, title card that exists is the one with the beta thing on it it died in beta paladin strike the only title card that exists is the one with the beta logo on it it died in beta we have already discussed these this person wondering when this is going to come out of beta it won't it never will it is dead it is gone this is the next game that will die in beta it will never come out because this is all high res does launch a mobile version tell me who why and how are they going to release it on mobile there are only several thousand people playing and that was being generous that was back a few months ago now there is barely a thousand people playing at least on pc and there is zero to one dev working on realm there is no further developments when are we going to get the next big update no further updates as of right now also never so we we had a lot of hopefuls still trying to still trying to say hey when's when's it coming i mean we've got other people you know just posting fail memes and making uh jokes but then we go we go back we go up to the latest one Ju july 24th where we have now confirmed via this lovely gentleman here where I, I i had to do their job for them and say hey don't play this weekend because there's an there's an ltm on because they don't like put it in its own section it takes up like solos duos and squads they don't actually put it in its own section so unless you want to play the mode then you're fucked but then we had a, an xbox player here on xbox you can't search for a game anymore no you can't it's dead and they're not going to fix that that's broken 
unless you enable crossplay. So either you get stomped by PC gods, which, you know, there ain't that many PC gods fucking playing, or you don't play at all. It was working a few days ago, now it won't. This is bullshit. Yes, it is, but it, it, it will not work. Uh, one last hopeful. Please contact me if there are any help you would need in making this game better. We all do. We all want to help. You know, Fortnite does this, where they have their little skin competitions. Hey, draw a skin for Epic. It, it don't matter if it's a fucking child's drawing, because they've accepted a seven-year-old's drawing before now. Hey, draw a skin for Epic, submit it to Epic, and if they like it, they'll be like, okay, we're going to make this a skin, and we'll give you, like, a thousand V-Bucks for free for making a skin. Or, no, I think you get 10,000, because it's, like, officially part of the game, and... Like, the amount of money that they would make from this skin is going to be, like, thousands, so, like, 10,000 V-Bucks is nothing. So, it's clear that Epic has the right idea, where it's like, Hey, make a Fortnite skin. Just fucking do whatever the fuck you want, and if we like it, we'll give you 10,000 V-Bucks. Or, as they did with the block, where it was like, Hey, build us a part of the map, and if we approve it, we'll put your little house, your little building, your little city on the map for a week and then we'll rotate it to another person, user generated content. So this person is trying to offer the same idea, just give everybody the source code, give everybody all the creation tools like Epic does. And that's what everybody wants, everybody wants to try and help make it better but hi res they'll never do that. We have people now with Ben here coming to the realization that everybody left. Even those battle pass beggars that we mentioned mere moments ago. High res abandoned realm, it does. Months later, even the battle pass beggars, the people are like, where's the battle pass? Where's the updates? Where's everything? Even the battle pass beggars have left the tweets. They've gone. This is the first post I have seen where nobody, no one is begging for a new battle pass. Because even the hopefuls, even the people that had hope, are gone. Do you really care about this game? No, they ditched it. They ditched it. And it, the list, and that's, that's enough, that's, that's enough, uh, you know, time here. But, like, we could go down this list over and over and over. We could go and see all these comments about, y'all can't even tweet on a consistent basis. If the creators give up on the game, how about we not support it? Like, we, we've got all this. We could go down and down and down the fucking list forever of people now. Like, we're in the five stages of grief. You know, the previous tweet, where's the battle pass? Everybody's in denial. Everybody can't accept it. Everybody's asking where the battle pass is. We've already moved past that. We've, pa we've skipped stages two, three, and four. We've gone from people being in denial to stages four and five where people are angry and people are accepting. A lot of people are angry and others are just like, yeah, it's dead, we know. Like, we, we've gone through the five stages of grief and most people are just at acceptance that it's dead. But, like, then we have uh, fucking, obviously, the, uh, the PR department trying to run damage control, which, no point. Where it's like, how about we not support it with Roman over saying, we post once a week. You don't. You fucking don't. Alright, you, you post once a week. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, to put out in any information on the new LTMs or any content coming. Because that's what is there right now. It, that's all that's there, Roman over. And this is, this is what I mean about high res stringing people along. Where they're like, that's what's re there right now. No Roman over. That's what's always going to be here. This is the pinnacle. This is the zenith. This is the top of the ziggurat. There will be no more stairs. Stop lying. Stop stringing people along, Roman over. Stop saying right now, because it's not right now. It is indefinitely. This is the top of the mountain. This is the, the, the peak, the zenith, the ziggurat at the top of the fucking Olympic stairs. There are no more stairs beyond this, so stop stringing people along. But hey, we, we tweet once a week. Okay, well let's see you tweet once a week, shall we? So, uh, 
We've got July 9th. All right, that's that's one. Uh, when was the one before this? June 26th. That's uh, that's two weeks break, by the way. That's not a week. So that's every two weeks. So that's not correct. Uh, July 9th to July 17th. That is about one week. Uh, July 24th. Yeah, that's a week. And uh, it's now the 3rd of August. And there's nothing. Nothing whatsoever. So much that, as I say, I had to do their fucking job and tell everybody that there's a shitty LTM going, so uh, you can't play this weekend. Unless you want to play in Guntown with revolvers only. Can't play this weekend. Where's your tweet about that one, Romanova? Where's the, where's the weekly tweet about that one? Oh, wait. You didn't. Because that's an old, that's an old LTM. That's one that has already come and gone, and you're just looping them. You're just playing them on repeat, because there's no new content. So you're just repeating the events over and 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 over until until you just shut the servers down. So now tell me, we're going to finish the video now. So now tell me, from all the information that I've given you, Anybody that's watching this review, anybody that's just come into the high-res bar being like, Yeah, Call of Duty! Not, not Call of Duty, sorry. Yeah, CSGO, the bombs are A. Terrorists win. For all of you that have just come into this bar with your, with your rogue company, from all the information presented to you about all the games that they've killed in beta, all the communities they've abandoned, how, how can you sit there and justify... No, 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 but Spyro, this one, this one will be the one that they keep. This is the keeper. They, no, it's not. I know you want that. I know you're fresh here. I know you're bright and starry-eyed. You're, you're, you've got that childlike wonder. You, you've got that bright, starry-eyed amazement. You've got that childlike wonder. And you believe. You're sitting there, and you believe, and you hope that this is the one. This is the keeper. It's not. It's not. When the next trend comes out, let's say it's tennis. When the next one comes out, they'll throw Rogue in the bin. Don't don't think about all these fantastical ideas that they're going to add to the game. All these fantastical modes. No. They'll, they'll sell you a couple of battle passes. And once once it's done, they'll, they'll throw it in the bin. Just like they threw Hand of the Gods in the bin. Just like they threw Strike in the bin. Just like they throw fucking Realm Royale in the bin, just like they've thrown Paladins in the bin pretty fucking much. Don't, 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 don't have that starry-eyed childlike wonder, because you'll only set yourself up for major disappointment. Anyway, let's finish the fucking review. Everyone knows that Hi-Rez has abandoned it. Romanova says they have not. They are just scaling back production for now. Which, okay, Romanova, m let me talk to you. I'm mad at them, not at you. If, I, if I'm shouting at you, I'm not shouting at you. I'm shouting at fucking high-res, right? Listen, Romanova, I get it. You are the community manager, and that's probably what the man at the very tip-top of the ladder has told you to, sh to say. But I'm sure that even you know it's a lie. Stop stringing people along. Stop giving people false hope. There is no hope. We already know all of the facts. There is blatant open interviews like that one on YouTube saying there is no team left. We know the facts. We know how many people are working there. Hi-Rez is not scaling back production for now. They have scaled back production permanently. Do not give people false hope. Just come out and admit it's dead. And here it is. A game that has so much potential. Gone to waste. Dead. And barren. A dead barren start screen. No characters. Just that beta logo. Like Hand of the Gods. This game will never come out of beta. Ever. Like Hand of the Gods. It will die in beta. Like Paladin Strike, it will die in beta. It will die because Hi-Rez just could not stop 
trend chasing and wanted that Valorant cash. Now tell me, Rogue Company fans, by their track record here, the evidence I've just presented to you, what makes you think Rogue Company will ever come out of beta? Hmm? As if it does not do well, and given it's an Epic Store exclusive, it's already on its way to not doing well. But if it doesn't do well, and then the next big trend comes out, for the sake of argument, let's say it's tennis, what makes you think Hi-Rez, given their track record presented here, given their track record of trend chasing and killing games in beta, what makes you think Hi-Rez won't drop this bootleg Valorant and shut down the beta servers in a heartbeat so that they can go trend chase the new tennis craze? The answer is they won't. They don't care about their games, nor their communities. There are people in both the Paladins and Realm communities that are willing to give them ideas for free, willing to make content for them and send it in like skins because it's not that hard to make a fucking skin and test it in Source Filmmaker and rig it up with the skeleton. There are people willing to make skins, fully test them and give them to Paladins and Realm for free to keep their two good games running. There are people crying out to keep the good games running and toss the bad ones. And Hi-Rez just don't care. Hi-Rez don't give two fucks. So do not get attached to Rogue Company. Do not look at it. Do not play it. It has nothing of value whatsoever. It is nothing more than a cash grab by a trend chasing company trying to trend chase Valorant. And if it fails, it will be tossed out for the next shiny new toy. It will die in beta just as Hand of the Gods died in beta, just as Paladin Strike died in beta, just as Realm Royale will die in beta. So my final verdict for Rogue Company, as you might have guessed, is shit. It's not even worth scoring. It has nothing of worth to offer. It is little more than a child playing pretend, wanting to be Valorant, wanting to be a generic shooter with generic graphics, a $60 game with mega transactions and $100 whale packs and fake cowardly monopoly money because it's too scared to just put the real prices on their skins and all the other things they've got in their store. And given their track record, more trash to be thrown away for a shiny new toy when the next shiny new trend comes out and they want to go trend chasing. Hi res as a company does not care to put effort into their games because it is too busy trying to leech off of everyone else. You can, you can come up to me and you can say they won't do that because it's the, I know, I know I've done this dance four times now. I have rid the t-shirt, I know their pattern. And if you're a first time, if you're a first time high res player, I know what you're thinking. And I've heard this before, you know? I've rid, I've rid the t-shirt, I have got the, sorry, I've rid the roller coaster, I got the t-shirt from the roller coaster, I got the signed photograph from the roller coaster, I've been to the karaoke bar, I've sung the song of Dance the Dance. I've done this four times before. So you, you can come up to me, Rogue Company fans, and you can say, Oh, but those games were shit. They will never do it to this one. This is the real one. This is the one that they will cherish. 
I know, you know, you can believe that. But I know better. I know what they do. Because I've seen them do it four times before. I know what they do. So, like, you, you can... You can leave the dislike. You can say that I'm just angry that Realm's shutting down. But no, I'm not. If Realm shut down tomorrow, eh, oh well. I can't stop it. Nobody can stop it. I'd be a bit sad because, again, it was one of the better games. If Paladin shut down tomorrow, again, I'd be sad. It was one of their better games, but I can't stop it. You can't stop it. Whatever. I wouldn't be mad. But you can say I'm mad. But it's like... When it comes time to shut down Rogue Company, then you'll see. Because they'll do it. Whenever whenever 2021 rolls around and their next game comes out, they'll shut it down. They'll do it. They actually already did it with profit. That's another story for another day. But, yeah. That's that's it. That's, that's, that's fucking Rogue Company. That's high res. They are, they are just sucking off there, they are leeching off of Valorant and eventually it will just go to its next shiny new toy. Despite, again, just I just want to repeat myself, despite having great communities that love and cherish these games, that want to see them succeed, that we'd be willing to make content for free, they don't care. And I've seen this pattern repeat three times now. So if you want to repeat the cycle, then I'll point out, this is now for high res. If you want to repeat this cycle, I'll point out, out the cycle for what it is. Lazy productions with no love or soul rushed out the door in beta as the latest toy. And once the next shiny new toy comes out, you will just stop caring. And more than likely, as we've seen from Hand of the Gods, Realm Royale, Paladin Strike and Prophecy, you will just throw it away. You will just throw your toy away. Stop supporting it. It's gone. Because this one is the next shiny new toy. And the only reason you are still in business is because you had two smash hits. You had a groundbreaking smash hit with Paladins. You had a groundbreaking smash hit with Realm that made... Two really big impacts, two really big waves. That is the only reason you are still in business and able to keep up this trend-chasing charade. And that's the end. This is just like a little bit of extra wrap-up. The video is over now. That's a squeaky chair. Just three things to wrap up. One, we had an update on that Xbox situation, by the way, wherein... You can't even press the ready button. You cannot even press the ready button unless you enable crossplay. There is that little pe either there's that little people playing on Xbox that there's physically not a single Xbox server, or there's not enough people to host the single Xbox server, or it's broken. Hi-Res won't fix it. Number two, tomorrow on stream, get ready because then we'll be doing a first impressions of. One of Devolver Digital's games of Fall Guys, that's what's going to be on stream tomorrow. And I've heard things about this game, especially from Devolver. Nobody, none of the people have got early access, none of the people that have played the, the beta have got to see whether this tab exists or not. That will only be in the final version that comes out in 12 hours. But depending on what is on that tab, depending on if that tab even exists, in the early alpha, in the early concepts when they were designing the game, apparently there's no such thing in this game. That tab does not exist. So depending on what we see tomorrow, I might very well have a really big fucking sword to hang over AAA's head. So, mmm, mmm. -hmm. That's going to be interesting. I'm quite interested. I mean, I'm, I'm interested in the game. I've already seen a couple of streamers uh, play the game. And it's something that we could definitely uh, get something together with for a group of people on stream. But, in terms of the other thing though, ooh, I'm interested to see that. And lastly, but not leastly, if you have seen across the course of this video, sometimes... You might have seen the 0 out of 500 and others, as you can see right there, 
you might have seen the one at 500 because we do have a Patreon now and as uh, I said on Steam stream they they baby get your words right because you're trying to do Twitch and YouTube at the same time but as I said on stream on Twitch that they will be shouted out anybody that does donate anybody that supports the channel does get shouted out so we have got now a uh, brand new Patreon list that I'm putting up. We get the nice gold background, or the nice purple background, with the Spyro golden letters. So this is this is going to be at the end of every stream and video for all of the extra supporters. So for right now, uh, thank you very much, Deddy. I really do appreciate the support. It really does help me out a lot. And uh, yeah, that anybody else can also be on this list with desired amounts of your choice but for now that's that's the that's the long one and the next video you'll see on youtube will be of tomorrow's stream where we're going to do a first impression of fall guys but for now uh, thank you all for watching i know it was a long one but i wanted to put all the information in there i wanted to show the history to say like this is their track record don't don't think that oh this is gonna be the one this is the one that they're going to keep working on nah look at their track record dude so I, I it was long but I wanted to make sure all the information was in there so you could see it's not just one game this has happened throughout their entire history of Smite Paladins Paladin Strike Hand of the Gods Realm Royale it, this has happened throughout their entire history so. It was a long one, but I wanted to pull the information. But yeah, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. It really, really means a lot. And again, thank you, Daddy, for uh, going that extra mile on Patreon. Again, I really appreciate that. That really, really also helps out a lot and does mean a lot. So thank you very much, Daddy. Uh, Daddy and I will see all of you in the next video.